welcome to my Friday message. As we approach the Thanksgiving holiday, I want to say how grateful I am for all of you and the work that you do to support the missions of the School of Medicine. Recently, I've been speaking with donors and alumni about why the School of Medicine is so worthy of their philanthropic support. It's such an honor to relay your amazing work and your accomplishments. When I think about what makes the School of Medicine so great, it comes down to the people. You are why we're able to make the big discoveries and translate them into improving health of those we care for. Like the ability to treat a fetus with a fatal disease, Pompeii disease, before it's even born. Or the revolutionary way we were able to do a partial heart transplant in a newborn infant. Or the development of a promising pan-corona vaccine, to name a few firsts. You are why our 17 degree programs are known around the world for their excellence. Our students, faculty, and staff are change agents and thought leaders, giving us endless reasons to be proud of what it means to have a Duke degree. And your commitment to community partnership makes the world a better place. From working with the military groups to prevent suicide in veterans, to planting neighborhood trees as a way to fight climate change and improve community health, to making big strides toward achieving health equity. You are truly making a difference and in that spirit of thanksgiving, I want to say thank you. I am thankful for all of you and wish you and your families a peaceful and happy Thanksgiving. And now for some news. Last time we talked about this fall's potential for a tridemic of COVID, the flu, and RSV. We discussed RSV the last time we spoke, and this week we'll discuss influenza. As for a COVID update, you can continue to track the data on the CDC's COVID data tracker. It's a great source of facts, figures, and maps tracking COVID at the national, state, and local levels. While overall activity remains low throughout most of the country, there continues to be some areas of increased activity currently in the Southwest, as well as constant changing in the variants that are predominant. So I encourage you to stay informed. And remember, that vaccination with boosters, which now includes the bivalent vaccine, is the best tool we have to card against another surge. So please get your bivalent booster. Now on to the flu. The CDC site, FluView, is another great tool to track and you can see the address on the screen. The key takeaway is that influenza activity continues to be increased, particularly in the southeast and south central regions. So far this season, there have been at least 2.3 million illnesses, 23,000 hospitalizations, and 1,300 deaths from the flu. In fact, the influenza hospitalization rate is now higher than for the same week in any of the last 10 years. The surge in flu and RSV cases is already impacting our overstretched hospitals, and the winter months are still ahead. As always, the annual flu vaccine is the best way to protect against flu, and I'm very proud of the fact that over 99% of our colleagues in the School of Medicine have been compliant with getting the seasonal influenza vaccine with just a small number not yet accounted for. And for your families, the CDC recommends that everyone aged six months and older get the flu vaccine annually, and that's the best way to protect those at risk. This is the third holiday season we've coped with the pandemic, and I know we are all ready for return to normalcy. We can and should enjoy being together, and we have a number of strategies and tools now to make that happen. Tailor your gatherings to protect the highest risk person in attendance. Encourage all family members to get their COVID vaccinations and annual influenza vaccines, and stay home from gatherings if you're not feeling well, even if it's not COVID. Additional safety measures might include gathering outdoors when possible, wearing masks in crowded settings or when traveling, particularly in regions of the country where there is increased COVID activity. You might also include pre-gathering COVID testing, particularly if visiting with those that are at increased risk. All of these things will help everyone have a safe and happy holiday season. And one last thing before I close. Today is the last day to respond to the Culture Pulse survey, which closes at 5 p.m. So far, we've had 44% of our School of Medicine colleagues respond. We extended the deadline just a bit because we sincerely want to hear every voice and perspective on what it's like to work at Duke Health in 2022. Every opinion helps us keep doing what we're doing well, change what we could do better, and know where to focus our resources and our energy. I sincerely hope you will join the conversation. 
As I said at the beginning of my message, I am so very grateful for all of you and want to make sure your voice is heard. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Have a great weekend, a happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you next time.